All right, guys, well, it's come time to start wiring this car. Now, before I do, I want to go over a couple of things with you guys on wiring, okay, and different ways to do it. Number one thing I'm going to talk about tonight is how to wire relays in line. Now, a lot of guys you'll see will just run from the battery to the switch and to the deal. No fuse, no nothing. It's not the right way to do it. No, I've done it in a pinch, but it's not something you want to leave there for a long period of time because the wires can get hot, things can fail, your system shorts, and then you have problems with the car. Okay, so what I want to do tonight is actually go through the wrong way. I won't say wrong, I'll just say the not proper way to do it, and then the way you should do it. Okay, so what I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you the other way of doing it all right so let's take a look here I did a quick mock-up so you guys can see exactly what I'm talking about all right so this is the way I see a lot of guys wire stuff in their car negative straight to what we want to do positive simply run through the switch and then to the actual component or we're gonna say accessory okay so what you see is guys that have this wired up and then you flip the switch and it comes on okay seems easy enough I mean you're just literally breaking the positive line with the switch now the problem with this is all the power is going through this switch okay so when the switch fails it's not fused there's nothing going on if you have a short you're melting wires things like that so this is not the way I suggest doing it we've all done this in a pinch but this is not the way you want to do it well before we get started one thing I want to go over is soldering Okay, and the proper way to do it, that way your joints actually stay together and everything. Now, the reason I solder my wires in a lot of my cars is because not all my cars ride smooth. Okay, there's a lot of vibration, a lot of things going on, going down the road, and I don't want it to come apart, especially my wiring. I don't want it coming apart, and I've done a lot of off-road applications, and during that, you definitely don't want your wiring coming apart, and it takes a beating. So what I'm going to go over first is how to solder the proper way with tinning your wires and actually creating a, a strong bond on your wires okay so let's do that first okay what I've got is just a scrap piece of wire now what I'm gonna do is strip each end and then we'll solder the two ends together and I'll just show you how it works okay now first off just take your strippers and strip off no more than about a half inch okay you don't need to strip off a ton of wire to do this properly okay you just want a little bit because we're gonna have to cover this up when we're done so there you go both ends are stripped about even doesn't really matter as long as they're done now I can't find my clamps for soldering so I'm just going to use this vise because for some reason I can't find anything in my garage right now so, the only reason we're doing this is to be able to keep our hands free, okay? There you go. Now, I'm going to take my soldering iron, I'm going to make sure the tip is clean and ready to go. I'm using 60-40 uh, 10 lead rosin core solder. Now, I use this because I don't, I'm not a huge fan of using flux. A lot of guys use it. Uh, I just quicker to do it this way. Okay, now I'll start by checking my iron to make sure it's good and hot. Then, what I do is I apply the iron to the bottom side of the wire. I'll heat melt some on it. And then, as I go, you can see that the wire is soaking in the solder. That means it's heated up the wire enough. Simple as that. so now when I'm done clean off the extra solder on my iron and I put it back okay now essentially what this is is I've tinned the wires okay tinning is just coating the wires so that they're both been fully coated in solder so when I put two, the two together they're gonna bond nice and clean okay just like so they both make completely coated all the way around. They're tinned and ready to go. Now, 
biggest step to remember before you solder together if you're going to put heat shrink on it do it now because if you forget you're going to have to unsolder it and then put it back on all right so i have some pre-cut pieces here i'm just going to go ahead and slip it on here just like so my solders my uh, heat shrinks out of the way now when I solder these two wires together, I'm going to clamp one, and then I'll solder this one to that one. Now, to do this, because I don't have my helping hands or anything to hold it in place for me, I'm going to load up my iron with some solder. Not enough that it drips off, just enough. Hold the two wires together, and let the excess solder bond the two wires like so you're going to hold it in place until you see the shininess go away that means the solder has dried and you're ready just like that it's completely soldered together you're not going to tear these two wires apart you can see the solder is all the way around these two wires are solid now they're good to go now I can take my heat shrink, slide it over the joint where I've done it, and then I'll take my heat gun and shrink it down. Now just like that, these two wires are completely bonded together they're coated so they can't short out on anything and you are not going to break this apart okay that's how we want our wires in the car so that we know they don't come loose and they will not break on us all right now whenever you're running a power wire to anything it should be fused or break or something like that in line in case there is a short in the car the fuse will go before anything goes wrong okay it's going to break the circuit on the hot wire that way you're not going to have a meltdown in the car. I bought this wiring harness, okay? In my head, I thought I was buying a wiring harness. But what I ended up buying is a fuse box with leads on it. So, don't even know how much this I'm going to use in the car. But, this will give me the fuses to break the line to the relays. Now, in this instance, I'm just going to be using an inline fuse. Okay, This is great when you're just adding a wire, adding something to the circuit. You don't have room on your fuse panel, so you just put an inline in. Now, this is the most common way that I do things um, when I'm redoing or adding things to a vehicle. Okay, Now, with the relays. The relay I'm going to be using today is a four-prong relay. Now, you can get the relay sockets like this. They come with wires already on it ready to go and the relay just pulls out and you plug the relay in okay these are nice but when you don't have it I'm gonna show you how to do it without so we're just gonna do it with just a relay okay the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put connectors on to go to the relay now since we're not using a relay socket what we're using is just a simple spade connector okay now, what I do is I take the insulator off the back of them. Sometimes they come off easier than others. Like so. So the plastic is removed and it's just the actual connector. Now, first thing first, I'm going to tin this wire, get it ready. If you guys notice in the background, I've got a stray cat that hangs out in the shop now. So, he's very talkative. So if you're wondering what the noise is, it's him. So, all right, so now that I've tinned the wire, I'm gonna take the connector, open it up a little bit, and then crimp it on. Now, I'm only crimping it to hold it in place while I solder it. So I'm gonna go ahead and smelt this connector melt the solder into this connector like so now 
that connector is bonded to that wire, it's never going to come off. I'm not going to have an issue. Now, because we don't have a socket, we're going to be putting this wire directly onto the relay. Now, I don't suggest soldering to your relay because what if you have to replace the relay? So, first thing first, put some heat shrink over. Find spot number 30. And press this guy on as far as it'll go. Okay. Then I'm going to push the heat shrink up over it completely and heat gun it. Now just like that, I've got the power wire connected to the relay. The prongs are completely covered so there's no chance of a short if something comes near it. And it's ready to go. Now I've already got a connector on the light. So I'm going to slide some heat shrink over. Plug it into 87. Now, relays are marked on the back. I don't know if you can see it. They have the numbers right next to the prongs so you know what you're dealing with. So, we put this into 87. Slide the heat shrink over it. And we are good to go. So, we've got power in, power out. Okay, so the next thing is ground. Okay, We've got to ground the light. We've got to ground the relay. So now there's a couple ways to do this. You can run just ground to the frame of the car. Um, you can ground to the a negative wire. But for right now, I'm going to ground them together so they're on one circuit and they're ready to go. Okay, now we can plug our ground into 85 for the switch. We're going to plug our switch leg into 86. and push the heat shrink completely over the tab so we're protecting it from hitting anything else because this is a hot wire going through. Now we have all these open spots on the switch. Now these could carry current too. And now this is an on off on switch is what I had laying around. So what we're going to do is in this case is I'm going to cut the prongs off. Now you could just put heat shrink on them, call it good, but in my case, I'm gonna cut the prongs off. So we're all wired up, ready to go. Flip the switch, relay connects, and on comes the light. Simple as that, no load through the switch whatsoever. Good, safe, everything's soldered, never come apart, ready to go. So guys, essentially all the relay is doing is acting as a remote switch, okay? What it does is it allows all the heavy amperage to go through the relay, not through the switch. Okay, your switch, all it does is trigger the relay. So think of the relay as a remote switch. Okay, and what it's doing is it's carrying the load of the current through there and not going through the switch. So you can use a dinky little switch because it's only got to put, I think, seven, seven and a half volts to trigger the relay. So you don't have to run heavy gauge wire and when you're trying to get it up in the dash and get it through stuff, you don't have to have this big bulky heavy wire going up there. And you can use smaller switches because you don't have to run the current through them. Okay guys, now you've seen both ways of doing it. You've seen the other way where you're putting all the load through the switch and you guys have seen how to run it through a relay. Okay, now you've seen how to solder. Okay, that's something that you just learn with time. Okay, the more you do it, the cleaner it'll look, the faster it'll be, and uh, it's a tool that you guys really will enjoy doing because your work is just that much better. All right, guys, tool review. Okay, so let's talk about some of the tools we use tonight. Well, first off, let's talk about soldering irons. Okay, so you guys saw my iron I use. It's a Heiko 435 or something. I've had that thing for about 10 years. 
Um, I used to be in RC cars a long time ago and I did a lot of soldering. It's adjustable temperature. I've got a newer one now that's full digital for soldering computer boards, things like that. But if you're just doing average car stuff, you don't need a crazy iron. You can get the Weller for like 15 bucks that is just literally the iron and a quarter. It'll totally work. Um, you got the old school Wellers, the big gun looking one with the trigger. It works, okay? And you can get fancy and you can get yourself a snap-on butane one, which I've used and they are amazing, okay? They're great. If you're under the dash and you want to solder a wire, you've got that butane to just do it on the spot. You don't have to try to drag a extension cord over and try to do it. But I haven't found many soldering irons that are crap, okay? As long as they heat up enough to melt the solder, then they'll heat up enough to tend the wires. So, you know, whatever you can afford, it'd be good. And you should have a soldering iron in your toolkit, that's for sure. Okay, solder. Okay, now you guys can get different solders. You can get flux. Now, there are guys that swear by flux. Now, what flux is, is like a paste. Now, you brush it on the area that you want the solder to go to, and when you heat it up, the solder goes to that area. I only use flux really on computer boards stuff like that because I want the solder to go in certain spots and if I'm real tight in there, I'll use a Q-tip and I'll dab it on there. But for your average garage soldering, automotive soldering, you don't need flux. You'll be totally fine. But do get the rosin core. This stuff melts better. I'm weird. I like thin solder. Um, the reason is I control how much I put on the gun and how much I put in. So I'd rather push more and more in then have too much and it look goopy and nasty and I can't fit the heat shrink over so that's the things I use um, crimpers strippers okay these here are channel lock brand crimpers um, most of them are totally fine okay the one tool let me find it I think I've got one around here these guys okay these strippers crimpers okay the stripper part will work but the crimping they're not good for crimping okay get yourself a real pair of crimpers um, you can get them at Harbor Freight if you want a cheap pair these guys go for about 24 bucks you can buy them at Depot around uh, they don't have to be channel lock brand just a good set of crimpers I've had these forever. As long as you don't lose them, they'll last you. Okay? So crimpers, I, I have to have a nice set of crimpers around. Okay? Strippers, there are all types of strippers, okay? And I'm not talking about the ones on the pole, I'm talking about actual players and wire strippers. Okay? So these guys are by Klein. Klein makes lots of electrical tools. Um, I've got numerous pair. These guys here, I like them. Um, you can pick all different ones. They're about 15 bucks a pair, but there's plenty of ones out there. So find one you like Heat gun, okay. Now I didn't used to use a heat gun. I used to use a cigarette lighter I'd use a big lighter and melt my heat shrink. That's all good until you burn yourself repeatedly Okay, ten bucks for a heat gun It's worth it it's nice just to be able to shrink things down. Yes, you do have to have a extension cord with you. Okay. Some of those butane solder irons have heat shrink attachments. So you can use the flame on the side to shrink them down. Those are cool too. But if you're bench soldering, heat gun, go tool to have. All right, guys. Well, I guess that's about it for tools tonight. Um, hopefully, you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully, I got some decent shots so you actually saw what I was doing. But uh, you guys have a good night. Um, I appreciate you watching. Uh, you know the drill. Like and subscribe. You want to see some other videos over here. I got to try to get to sleep. I'm leaving for SEMA in like three, four hours. So anyway, guys, have a good one. Next video will be all the crazy stuff I see at SEMA. Have a good night.